But alongside me, I have approximately 6,000 pages of permit holder letters that sent to each permit holder over the last 10 years. To some individuals, like Mr. Burgess, who sits alongside me, he receives between 11 and 18 sets of these notices every year. They are complicated, they are confusing, they are often conflicting. At the same time, NOAA and NIMFS, who are supposed to be working with us, have begun to enforce these regulations in a manner which can only be described as un-American. The fines are unbelievable. The minimum fine, there is a penalty schedule, it's attached to my, uh, to my statement, it starts at $5,000 for a violation, for the first violation, up to $80,000 for the first violation. Uh, fines are repetitively charged. Over the last 10 years, we have seen fines change from serious fines for conservation violations to half million dollar fines for late paperwork. The agency seems to have lost total touch with the people it regulates. Some of these violations, in fact, we discovered were being observed by NOAA personnel who sat by idly, knowing that somebody was not getting a report in timely, and then turned it over to law enforcement and it, who issued half million dollar fines, all for unintentional, totally understandable violations. The situation is unbearable, and that is why Eventually, some of us, and for 10 years I've been writing to uh, my congressional delegation, requesting that they investigate and make changes. I'm very happy that you have. But much harm has been inflicted on this agency, uh, on the industry, over the last 10 years, and something needs to be done both on a, for the future and to address those people who were unfairly treated in the past. I, I, I know that I've run over, but. Again, one of the major problems we have is the process by which fines are set, this issue of how, what factors go into it. By NOAA attorneys, we are at representing respondents. It is our responsibility to argue to an administrative law judge why the fine is inappropriate. Yet we are not allowed to know the basic elements that the attorneys used in setting fines. So we end up in an impossible situation and as a result, many fishermen do settle. They settle at amounts they can't afford to pay. Ultimately, two years later, some amount comes due. They lose their boats, they lose their homes, they lose the ability to put their children through college, and they lose an important part, we lose an important part of our culture. 